well good morning welcome to episode number three so in episode two I had some friends along to help me with some of the work and they ended up setting up a little bit of equipment and yard for themselves and so now you can see my price or my uh, money has been inflated a little bit so the game what it does is uh, if you use your map and play multiplayer and then go back to single player then all the money that the other farms had on this map are all given back to you so I got all that money back and uh, I also inherited their debt so I paid off their debt with uh, whatever money I did get and it still looks like we're in really good shape financially now I did make one other change and that is that uh, we are no longer gonna, going to be using that new dump truck it just doesn't quite match with the pickup truck and the rest of the vibe of you know starting out with the smaller of the uh, implements so instead what we will be doing this mod just came out and so I'm excited to use it is the Mac RS700L grain truck now that looks like a proper farm truck to me. You can see we have the semi as well if we need. But today we'll just be using the grain truck. I think that is a beautiful looking unit. I'll probably end up decorating it to my liking and uh, we'll go from there. Here we have it. So that is not a bad looking Mack truck. And I think this should serve the farm a lot better as far as keeping things, you know, a little more with the uh, old school style that we're going for. I know some of our tractors are pretty new. We can't really help that because the game doesn't give us a lot of old tractors to pick from. But whenever we do get something that we can use, we are always happy to use it. So why don't we fire it up and see what it sounds like. Sounds honestly, it sounds kind of generic, but tarp works great. Uh, we have a grain door for tipping or the back. Probably use grain door when we uh, tip into the auger. Oh wow! <laughs> a lot of shifting here my friend that sounds interesting that'll be something to get used to for sure no engine brake whereas the other dump truck did have engine brake but no that's fine definitely something interesting very cool hey I'm gonna bring this truck on home and uh, we'll see what we get up to today I'm just going over my map right now and uh, 25 looks all right 22 is growing for some reason 22 is now owned by me I believe that was because of uh, playing with uh, the friends from last time they bought field 22 and sewed it in so now 22 belongs to me not the way I like to do it but it is what it is 25 is growing well number two is uh, doing good and number three I think we cut last time and it looks like it's doing all right 17 is still withered that is fine I am not worried about 17 at this moment I would rather focus on buying number one or uh, 21 or 24 but uh, let us see what the fertilized situation is so 25 could definitely be fertilized again and number two might need some fertilizing yet we will see very good and uh, what are we growing see I don't even remember these things but it looks like number two I have a section of corn and a section of soybeans 22 is going to be corn and uh, 25 is going to be oats 26 is probably grass and uh, soybeans are withered on field 17, which we're not worried about. It's just last year's crop. Well then, 
I think we should probably get our fertilizer out and uh, maybe get to work on fertilizing uh, some of our fields now that they're a little further along if I can find my fertilize cart I know the fellows have been using them and so it's uh, interesting that might be another chore I might have to get to is uh, collecting all of my equipment because I'm having a hard time spotting it but yeah there's my cart perfect why don't we set oh shoot let's let's get the T6 and uh, we'll send it off fertilizing the T4 could do it just as well but T6 has that little bit extra something and look I just earned a trophy field trip I believe that means I drove X amount of miles whatever it is I'll check maybe later maybe in uh, post edit I can uh, tell you guys what it is but for now we're just gonna get this worker on the field ready to go so we know uh, field number two needed some fertilizing as well as 25 I don't even see anything growing on my field yet honestly but let's see if they'll take any fertilize as of right now I did roll it no nope, looks like uh, they're not happy with that all right, maybe we try again in just a little bit. Maybe we do this field first. Are you serious? Here, give him a little head start. And nope, they don't take it. All right, maybe it's not quite time. <laughs> no field found sir I uh, I happen to disagree with you there is a field there definitely but if that's not going to happen then uh, we may as well go off and uh, just do some missions or we can sleep away until we actually do have a uh, bit of time to fertilize but I still need to find some of my equipment goodness me I'm very concerning that a lot of my equipment is gone and I can't pack anymore. It's been probably three weeks since I have last played, so my driving is terribly rusty. I actually leave that hooked up and just turn that off. Now, I'll jump out of here and... Uh, I want to find some of my equipment. Yes, my tools. Where are m all of my tools? I see there's some stuff here. Maybe some cattle stuff. But I feel like there's a planter missing or something. Let's get the old truck. We'll see if we can find out where <laughs> all of our equipment went. Cause I think there's a corn planter missing somewhere. Oh, no, that is my... No, that's not my corn planter. Maybe one of the guys used it last, and uh, I just gotta go find it out. I have a suspicion it's gonna be out on the cement pad or underneath this roof somewhere. But I guess we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> I can see it already. There it is. I can't even pull the thing home. Neither of them, they're both three-point pole. Alright, well, at least we know where they are. It's a good first step. So I think uh, our next step is to sleep. And uh, get some, some crops growing on these fields. They're bare. Just don't see a thing on them. We need to see some crops. And uh, maybe we'll have to make some hay somewhere if uh, the weather holds out and we're able to cut some grass somewhere that would be great. Field 6 really isn't that far away I mean <laughs> it's uh, just a little drive so I think uh, what we'll do we'll get field 6 all set up here with my tractor 
and we'll let him just do his thing. Don't really need to babysit a mower, it's so straightforward, right? So, let's just get y'all set up, we can lower and turn on. And I do believe it goes something like so. And off they go. Now this is only a uh, four meter cut, I believe. And I've been looking at some other ones, just, you know, kind of checking stuff out. And uh, there is definitely bigger ones here. This one here is a four meter. This is just a side cut and it's 4.4 meters which is interesting because you could always have a, a 3.1 meter on the front and a 4.4 on the side which would make it a little better and then we have this big bat wing which we could definitely put on the uh, our T6 have this bat wing here with the uh, front mount on the three point in the front and that gives a total of 8.3 meters and then we have this one here for 180 to get 7.3 meters. So there's, yeah, there's this yellow one here that is 10 meters. There's definitely a lot of options. Then we have a 12.3 meter and then my little disc bind. There's this one here, 10.2 as well, but that requires quite a bit of horsepower. Whereas my disc bind only requires 90, as you can see. So we can't have everything, but uh, we will enjoy what we can. And uh, Field 6 is plenty big enough. I think we'll have a lot of fun working on that. And the disc bind is flying. We're doing 22 clicks an hour. Cannot complain about that. We'll ted it and probably leave it for a day or two and uh, come back to it. In the meantime, we can check on our other tractor and see how it's doing. It looks like 80% is the uh, capacity. So it's on his uh, second round. I'd probably have to fill it at least once more. But we'll play that one by ear. And just like that, we're all done fertilizing this field. So uh, while we were uh, busy fertilizing, I did a few changes. Uh, did some nice stuff well I'll show you right away now one of the changes that I did make you can see just off to our right I went and got a bigger mower it does twice as much as our uh, disc bind so I'll probably end up selling the disc bind after this mission and uh, I want to see if I can't run it on a T6 because I think the 8770 is a little oversized for running a mower Although it looks like it requires about 140 to 160 horse. So we'll kind of play it by ear, see if the T6 can run it or not. But I don't think it should be a problem. And uh, there's one other uh, little thing I bought that I think will really help speed up the process of making hay. And I'm about to show you guys that in just a moment. And this here is what I am talking about. This is a uh, front mounted rake. I can unfold that for you guys to have a look. Now why would I want this when I have a bigger rake that does a lot wider of a path? Well, the trick here is that uh, we can eliminate having a tractor drive the entire field raking and then another tractor doing the entire field bailing simply by doing it like this. So now our worker will bail as well as rake all in one shot. So yes, we uh, won't be able to rake quite as wide, but the benefit is definitely there where we can bale and rake at the same time. And I think that will be a cost-saving measure as well as a time-saving measure. That was kind of cool how my, uh, my baler there the hand cranked. I thought that was really cool. So I don't know if I will use my windrow, my Y1 that I have anymore. I might end up selling that one and uh, just keeping this. 
Well, the T4 is <laughs> still cutting away. And what do we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 12. We're on a 13th pass. And you can tell that the other mower has done probably half as much already. And uh, it's going just as quickly. But it's doing twice the pass. So that is really, really good. And uh, it's a lot simpler to operate too. As you can see by our... Uh, NPCs here not really knowing how to operate a uh, disc bind. I love the disc bind, don't get me wrong, but uh, I'm thinking it is time to move up in the world, especially with a large grass field like this. You know, I'll probably end up uh, keeping some of the hay here for myself, so I think that should work out in the end. And maybe one day I'll actually own field number six here. That would be great. I want to see if, well, this one is doing about 16 or 17. Yeah, about 17. So if I can jump to this tractor, let's have a look and see what we're doing here. Oh yeah, we're going up to 22 here quite easily. If we look off to our right, that's the disc bind. So in theory, this tractor should pass the other tractor before the end of the row. Each one of these wings is about the width of the disc spine, so you see we're getting a lot more cut for uh, what we're actually doing here. Again, I don't think that this tractor is optimal as far as realism goes for uh, cutting with the duals on there, but we'll take it for now. Maybe next time I'll use the T6. Yeah, he's just about caught up there already with the T4. That's great. It's a nice little race. You know, it's always sad letting go of equipment when it's served you so well in the past. But uh, I think that is it for the uh, disc bind. The other tractor's got another round to go and uh, we're all done with the grass. And uh, since we have a bigger mower, there's no point in keeping two of the identical equipment. Unless we had a lot of hay fields that were cut at once. So, with that in mind... We are going to uh, go to our mowers and we're going to sell this disc spine. Good for 90 horse. It has done us wonderful. And the extra almost $13,000 is sure to please. Now, speaking of things that uh, we needed to get rid of, this here has been my tether for the entirety of this game that we've been playing in the new season and this is by no means any small tether but we all know we're trying to make the make it to the big leagues so I sold it but in its place I got a tether that I'm hoping will work with the T4 as it's 95 horse but the uh, tether is good for a hundred horse so without further ado let me show you the new tether that is the biggest one in the game and it is huge and it was expensive too my goodness it was uh, I believe eighty two thousand dollars so yeah let's hope the uh, T4 can pull this. Otherwise, what a shame, right? I am going to park the uh, T6 off to the side. It's there just in case the T4 doesn't manage. I mean, the T4 is kind of our chore tractor anyway, but uh, we love trying all kinds of oversized things on our T4 just to see how well it performs. And it hasn't disappointed yet. You know, we've bailed with this thing. We've done pretty well everything. So we pull that ahead a little bit and fold it up so we can get to our location we want to start at. And would you look at that. That is beautiful. That's a beautiful folding mechanism right there. Nice and tidy. And it'll probably drop down, clamp around just like that. So it doesn't look too huge like this. But uh, we all know once it's spread out, it's uh, a lot of PTO power being used. So 
so we'll uh, unfold it again so we can get an accurate feeling of where we're at. Let's just see how many swaths we can take at once. I'm going to bank on we're driving in between these two swaths. Let's zoom that out a little bit. Yeah, you know, I think I am probably right and lower and turn it on and let's see oh would you look at that I well I guess if I drove straight that'd be great I might have to go a little further off to the side maybe just over this swath something like so yeah yeah we can hire a worker that yeah, looks like our uh, T4 is handling that like a champ well, that makes me happy because the T4 can get busy with uh, all of this while the uh, big tractor is still mowing. And it looks like it's almost at the end, so I might pause it and just grab the T6 and see if the T6 can handle that mower. So let's go find the 8770. Yeah, it's got one more pass left to go. This is perfect. Come on, cut to the end. Lift up and dismiss. Detach. Oh, detach, I said. We'll drive this forward. And we'll detach there. I still love this tractor. I know we're going to have to upgrade at some point, but if this doesn't sound awesome, I don't know what does. Oh, there she is. We'll start her up and... Uh, <laughs> See if it'll handle the mower as well as our 8770. It's always a bit of fun. Just gotta kind of max out your power. See if your equipment's able to handle it. There we are. I have a feeling that this is gonna go really well. I have no doubt in my mind that this tractor can operate this unit. So right about there and we hire a worker. Look at that. Like a champ. Also doing 22 clicks an hour. That makes me really happy. Really, really happy that we can do that. So that leaves the uh, 8770. Uh, it can go back home now. And that's exactly what we'll do. We'll send it on home and uh, we can get busy with other business. There we have it. We're all hooked up. Ready to go. Looks like there's a small bit of hay in the baler still. Not to worry. We're not too worried about that. We'll start making bales immediately. And hopefully there's no mold in our baler, right? Yeah, no. I cleaned it out. I'm sure I did. And here we are. So we can unfold our winter ore and we can lower it down just like so. Does that look like it's going to reach? I might just do a little exaggeration. Kind of really go off to the edge. Right on. That should be straightened out. Now, what I did notice is we can turn on automatic drop on our baler, which is awesome because that way. We don't need to stop every time. That is definitely uh, in the books for things that they did right. Lower our pickup and turn on the baler. We will turn on our wind roar. There we go, everything rolling at once. So is it doing what we want it to do? It looks like it. We're raking. Let's hire a worker there. Yeah, we are raking to the center. The baler is picking it all up. Wow. So we saved ourselves a lot of diesel this way. Definitely saving ourselves diesel. Oh no, look at this. I see uh, a problem here. Hold the phone. This will never do. Back up, boy. <laughs> oh no we need to leave the uh, stop for the drop <laughs> I gotta push that away now
There we are. That should probably do it. Auto drop has to be off. Otherwise he leaves a lot of strips out and we can't have that now, can we? There we are. Let's hope he doesn't run over his own bale. And he does, of course. <laughs> well, that didn't go to plan now, did it? Okay, okay. Let's get this bale out of here. This is uh, really hard on that baler, I will admit. Try again. We'll get her right. We'll get her right, yeah. Just like so, and hire a worker. <laughs> there we are. Now, let's uh, see what happens. I hope the worker stops now, so that they don't keep letting all those uh, swaths pass over. Now, let's just pay close attention. Yeah, there's the beeping. All right, I want to see you stop now. They do not stop. So, that is interesting. There's going to be a lot of swaths left over. I don't know if this is such a good idea after all. Well, let's see. Let's see how much of the bailing they actually finish. If it's just a little bit at a time, it might not matter too badly. Where is our contracts? Looks like only 20%. Well, well, well now. <laughs> I guess we wait and see, but uh, no, this is very disappointing that uh, I thought I had the auto off. Pretty sure I did. But just in case. Hold on, back up. Turn on auto, turn it off. Yeah. That's how it should be. That's kind of unfortunate. Oh well. We'll leave them be. See what happens. See what they're going to do. Might have to end up doing some cleanup yet. Might not be quite the greatest invention I ever thought. This would work really well with a square baler. And maybe that's what we'll have to do. We're ready to try this unit out here. Alright. Looks like brake works. And our baler. Hold the phone. That that was not good. I don't think I dropped my uh, pickup. Here. Lower pickup and turn on the baler. And lower wind roller and turn it on. Now we get to work. Dang it. Don't be slacking off now. I don't need any of that BS. So, yeah, let's just keep an eye out and see what it looks like when we have one bale done. So far everything looks right, but uh, with the round baler we saw, it was uh, quite surprising, the uh, end result. So, uh, as soon as I see what happens with this first bale, then I'm going to be happy and we can move on. I'll probably end up collecting all of those uh, little ends, odds and ends that I left out with the round baler, and I'll probably take the round bales home to my cow feeder yard yeah so it didn't skip a beat there that's good be kind of curious to see what it does here at the end of the field too should be pretty good I would imagine but uh, seeing as it's a rake that it's focusing on we might have some very uh, funny movements shall we call it yes uh, looks like they figure they're only going to go about that far. And the baler's still running. Okay. We're going right to the edge of the map, are we? Okay, okay. I see what you're doing. Yeah. There might be some stuff left over from the look of it. Uh, oh yeah, there's definitely going to be some stuff on the perimeter left out. Now uh, we might do a perimeter sweep yet. We'll see. But so far, it does not look too bad. Very promising. Just tells us what we need to do for next time. 
you know, a perimeter sweep would definitely be uh, a good order of business. Just like a side sweep break or something. I think that would really help us. Good stuff. This guy's going to be busy. I think my tether's way ahead. So we can leave these guys to do their thing and uh, we'll go and clean up some of those round bales. What we want is a flat wagon that can carry both, but uh, we can cheat a little bit and do some very quick cleanup. So what I want to show you guys, there's another stacker, is the Pongi wagons. So these are really nice. You, you have the 24 bales, the 28 bales, and the 32 bales. And we're going to go for the 32 right away while we're at it because it's about the same price as I sold my baler for. And the roll-in ones, we could do two, but we don't want to. We want to go with this one because it can do a little more. And it looks like there's no horsepower requirements. Now, I if I understand this correctly, this is an auto load. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to buy this wagon because I figure we'll probably need it anyway. We will buy it. It looks like the total price was 34,350. All right, I've already reset the T6. So it is ready to go. And so we'll just jump straight to the T6 and we'll see what it looks like. I should really stop doing the turning thing. There it is. So a nice straightforward wagon. Doesn't look like there's much to it, but the auto load feature will definitely enhance our loading a lot quicker. I can tell this front steering axle, which is gonna be a bit of a pain in the back, but fortunately for us, we don't need to do a lot of backing with this type of wagon. I'm gonna bring this thing on over to the field and we'll see you guys there. So the question is now, why an auto load wagon? And uh, the answer, honestly, is just convenience. You can load a lot more on this one. I know some of the smaller ones are about the same as uh, your traditional wagons. But on top of that, it, it saves a lot of time and a lot of frustration. So there you go. See, it just popped right on there. Now I have to be careful that I don't go grab and I'm going to put a transport mode right now because I don't want to grab those squares just yet. I don't even know if we can do both of them at the same time. We will have to see if we can do two different types of bales at the same time. But I'm going for the round first so we can fill all that up. And then if we grab some squares afterward, that's good. And with these, all you need to do is just drive relatively close by and they will just kind of pop up there. As you can see, pop, and that bell actually started moving before I even got there. Looks like there should be one more round bale. And uh, another advantage to using these auto load wagons is uh, unloading is very simple because the whole pile will just slide and uh, you can move the entire pile in one shot is it realistic no it's definitely not realistic but does it save you a lot of time yes it sure does and you're just <laughs> one bale of one size at a time oh go figure we'll put it back in transport mode that's a waste of a trailer if you ask me that's okay we'll have these loaded up in no time at all yeah, so uh, if you're stacking bales, then you can actually stack much better and a lot straighter and nice and square. You know, for those of us with OCD, it's just that much nicer. And I'll show you in just a minute what I mean with how nicely these things unload. It is uh, quite a thing to see. I will actually unload these six round bales at the end of the field just so that uh, I can pick them up later. See, and as, as soon as I pick up a square bale, then they will not automatically grab the round bales. We are just about at the end of the field here. We'll drop these off and we'll start getting some of these square bales. 
I'm sure you guys will be very impressed. There we are. That something like so. All right. So triangle is to unload the bales. And now what you can do, see how I can slide it? That is one of the really nice things either way. And I can go up to stack higher. And I can also go low. And put that right on the ground. And then hit triangle again to... There you are. And it's perfect. And now when I back away... We will have to hit reset and then we will go for these square bales here. So we can hit reset and operating. And now we'll just start collecting these bales. Well, off we go to the barn. We're going to go sell these for the farmer. And we should uh, be done this field before too long. I think this wagon is a great investment. Look at the amount of bales I was able to load in no time at all. No struggles with loading or having your bales tip over. So to unload, all we're doing is moving our bales over to said square, dropping it down, and putting them right there. Looks like three of them stayed because they were outside of the square. That is fine. We will leave them there. We'll uh, we'll get them on the next round. Not to worry. Yeah. So this trailer having to unload is going to be the uh, most difficult part. But uh, I won't be unloading there all the time. Most of the time, it'll be through drive-through for my farm. So, folks, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we leave these bales on the field here. There. Let's take those. We will put them down here. Just like so. And we will grab those round bales and we can probably just give him those six round bales. And uh, he'll be happy with that. And the harvest will be 100%. If that is indeed the case, then all of those square bales are going to me. Which I do not mind at all. That will definitely help with uh, our cattle situation, which we will be getting into some point into the future. So we're heading off here, and I <laughs> will see if a six round bales is enough to satisfy him. I love how uh, at the bottom of my screen it shows a square bale. Ooh, that camera collision. My goodness. Let's see if we can make the old man happy. Just like so. Whoa, buddy. Unload bales. Contract is done. Got a little extra out of it yet. Sold a bale for a good price. And off we go. So that 28 bales that we set aside, those are all ours now. And you best believe that I'll be taking those home. So you'll notice I'm not collecting my payment for my uh, contract just yet and for a very good reason if I collect it then those bales disappear so first I gotta bring those home and then once they're home then I will collect my payment anything that stays on the field for some reason just wants to disappear I'm curious how this is going to work reset I am going to just drive up alongside of it and then going to hit operator or operate mode. See what happens. Operating position. Look at that. <laughs> Done. And away we go. Let's get these bales out of here before someone steals them. That was fantastic. Fastest loading I've ever seen. Bring that tractor on back. And park it like so. This little guy can go too. He's all done. This uh, tether was definitely worth the purchase. 
and I'm very happy with that. So that's quite a few purchases we've made. We swapped out our dump truck. We've uh, bought a new tether. What else did we get? We got a bale wagon, an auto little bale wagon. Oh man, we got a new baler. We got a new rake. Uh, still have to sell the old one, the red one, because we probably won't be using that anymore. All in all, I think that was a terrific success. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And if you guys did, leave a like on the video. If you guys want to uh, leave a comment, let me know what you thought or anything you'd want to add to it. I'm always happy to listen to your comments and see what you guys are thinking. If you guys are new to the channel or you haven't subscribed yet, you can do that. It's totally free. There's no month, no monthly subscriptions. It's just a free subscribe. I I don't charge you guys money. Heck, I don't even uh, have ads on my videos. If you see ads on my videos, that's because YouTube put them there. That is not me. I don't have close to enough subscribers yet that uh, I can have any kind of ads. So yeah, feel free to skip those ads. That's just YouTube making a bunch of money, not me. And uh, if I ain't making money, I don't know why I would encourage you guys to uh, watch those videos. <laughs> doesn't sound very, uh, doesn't sound like I'm very supportive of YouTube, even though they're the platform I choose to use. It's okay. Of course it's okay. There we go, we can fold that. Anyway guys, I'm busy cleaning up and getting carried away again, so I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care of yourselves now.